You don't want them to, you don't, yeah, you don't want it to keep happening over and over again, like, because then it, it, it can cause a complex, right? So the puppy should learn from it pretty quickly. So if the puppy comes and is jumping on a dog and the dog goes, hey, knock it off, the puppy should go, okay, sorry, stop. And they should be good for a bit. The puppy should be careful around that dog for a little bit, but not scared to death for endless periods of time. If you have a dog that kind of continues to do it every time the puppy gets too close or any of that kind of stuff, now you can start to create a problem too where they're kind of bullying the puppy. And there are dogs that won't hurt them, but they'll be constantly kind of putting them down. And that's not good for them either. So there's kind of a happy medium there. I also, uh, for me, and this is uh, for me personally, um, I try to cultivate a certain attitude in my dog, especially in working dogs and the, that I'm gonna go do things with. And that is neutrality towards strange dogs. And my dog should have uh, be comfortable and like the dogs that are routinely in their life, right? So my other dogs, my friend's dogs, the dogs that they're gonna see on a regular basis, that I go hiking with and that kind of stuff, though I want those, them to have relationships with those dogs. The rest of the dog population out in the world, I want to be like furniture to my dog. Like, I have no interest in you, you're, you're not, I'm not afraid of you, I don't care about playing with you, whatever. And I try to cultivate that attitude in the dog, and part of that's done through our socialization process. So I don't use dogs that I meet out in the world as a way of socializing my dog directly. I teach my dog to pay attention to me and gets lots of rewards for ignoring that dog when I'm out in public. And the way I cope with it myself personally is if somebody's coming with a dog and they say, hey, can my dog meet? I say, I'm training my dog right now. So I'm, I'm trying to teach it to ignore other things. So you'd be super helpful if you, if you wouldn't let your dog get in my dog's face. And I just hold my dog's attention. I feed my puppy. I work around a little bit and say, thanks. And off I go, right? And I use it kind of as a training situation where I just teach my dog, yeah, that's not interesting to you. And that's, that for a working dog is useful because we have to work our dogs in so many places where there are other dogs. And if your dog is too dog interested, then you have issues, of course, with your dog performing their task. They get distracted by the other dogs. They wanna go say hi, they wanna play or whatever. And so cultivating that takes a little bit of work. And so when I let an older dog socialize by puppy, it's usually a dog that's in their extended family group the dogs that I know. Now, this is easier for me, obviously, <laughs> than it is for, not everybody has other dog trainers around and a wide variety of dogs to choose from. I can go, oh, let's see, who has just the right dog? My dog doesn't like big white dogs. Ah, I know somebody for that, right? So I can, I, I, I have access to a lot of that. And so you may have to cultivate some of that by getting in touch with other trainers or, or with dog training groups and things like that that can allow you to find that kind of situation for your dog. Yeah. Yep. So, passion and management. Yep. So, she what she said asked is if your old your own personal dogs are inappropriate with puppies, then they don't. They, I manage that they don't get direct contact until the puppy's older, and then the introductions happen in a more controlled way. And there are lots of older dogs that are good with puppies and not good with older dogs, and then there are the the reverse dogs that are not good with puppies but are fine as soon as they turn into adolescents and they're not little puppies anymore. They just don't like the little puppies. So you get a whole host of, part of that is a function of their socialization experiences and part of it's a function of their, their genetic temperaments too, to some degree. And so identifying those kinds of dogs will be useful for you. And if you go into training professionally, then it's important to have a network like that. So you can help either clients, uh, clients' dogs with, with the appropriate kind of dog, it's huge. You ask any, professional trainer and having the right kind of neutral appropriate older dog for working with clients dogs is so useful. There we go.